This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, and on behalf of my team here at JSA, welcome to our monthly virtual roundtable. We are bringing together top industry experts talking about topics important to our industry in our monthly series, available right here on JSA TV YouTube channel, as well as on JSA Radio, the only telecom and tech podcast available on iHeartRadio. These monthly roundtables lead us up to our on-site CEO roundtables. Next one up is Telecom Exchange, June 21st, 22nd, downtown New York City. And then uh, we'll also have a Telecom Exchange in LA, right in the fabulous Montage Beverly Hills, and that's November 14th through the 15th. More info is at thetelecomexchange.com. Well, let's get right into it. Today's topic, the evolution of the Green Data Center has been garnering a lot of support and social media buzz. Thanks, guys, for all those tweets and LinkedIn posts. Um, it is definitely uh, exciting. We have about 80 folks logging in live to, uh, to have an audience here today. Welcome, welcome, and thank you to those who are watching on demand. This roundtable is brought to you on our JSA video platform, which allows our panelists to log in virtually. And today, we're just, we were just talking. We're spanning the country from Miami to Seattle streaming live video feeds care of our partners, Pinnica. So thank you, Pinnica, and let's get started. I'm honored to introduce our guest moderator, Mr. Rich Miller, a dear friend of mine for many years. Uh, he's the founder and editor of Data Center Frontier, and one of my personal favorite writers of data center uh, space. He's writing on places where the internet lives, the story of data centers, the people who build them, he really um, makes, a, makes himself the perfect guest uh, moderator today to talk green data centers with our all-star panel. So Rich, thanks for being with us today and please do us the honors of um, introducing our expert panelists. Uh, I certainly will. Thank you so much, Jamie, for that kind introduction. I'm excited to be here. I love talking about data centers and this is a great topic. Uh, our format, I'd like to briefly start by introducing uh, the panelists. Uh, we have Benjamin Von Seeger, who is the CEO and President of DVS Consulting. Uh, Chad Lamb, who is the Director of Engineering at XKL. And Sean Mills, who is the President and CEO and also a founder of Greenhouse Data. Now, green data centers is a pretty large topic and it might mean different things to different people. Uh, the evolution of green data center has kind of been that um, initially we were focused on uh, saving energy, trying to be as efficient as possible in the construction of data centers uh, to reduce cost and lower the amount of energy being used. Then uh, we have had a big focus on social responsibility lately, including the use of renewable energy in powering and, uh, and sourcing the renewables like solar and wind for the data center. And there's also been recently a lot of focus on other resources that uh, the data center industry uses, such as water, which is uh, a big topic in, in some markets for the data centers. So I'd like to start by uh, asking each of you to take a couple minutes and talk about what green data center means to you uh, and how um, the green concepts and principles have uh, been applied in, uh, in your career in business. Uh, and I'll start with Benjamin. Um, thank you so much, Rich. Thanks so much, Jane, for having me on your program. It's, it's a privilege and I really appreciate it. Uh, to dive right into your question, uh, Rich, um, if you look around the, uh, the climate change, uh, we have, as professionals in the telecom industry, we have to do our part. And since um, the last 20 years that I've been building data centers, starting with Terramagnet of the Americas, the idea was always um, to go green because we do need the data centers, but also in the process, we cannot go ahead and destroy our planet. So <clears throat> the green idea... Uh, came from a study that I just read uh, not long ago from all the places, Germany, uh, where you have a lot of rain every year, but um, they deployed a lot of solar panels and, and um, uh, wind energy uh, sources to power all the data centers. Um, if you think in general uh, how much uh, power we use in a facility, I mean, I just take an example, a uh, map of the Americas, which is 750,000 square foot facility, holding 180,000 gallons of fuel, 
uh, we want to replace that fuel with, uh, with, uh, with, with a green source. Um, it is imperative um, if you want to keep our planet clean and for, for the future generations that we move all the data centers towards a green solution. That's my opinion. Um, what the solutions are, we can dive later into the conversation, but um, uh, around the world now there are hundreds of data centers and if we look at um, Asia and other polluted countries, uh, we have to we have to move towards uh, um, a usage of, of, of a green solution. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll turn to Sean Mills. You've got green right in uh, the name of your data center company. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, how green is applied in, in your business. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Rich. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, you know, Greenhouse Data was founded back in 2007 as a green data center. Uh, and our whole philosophy around uh, our corporate uh, culture and corporate mantras and, and, and march into the, the space was around operating as energy efficiently as we can. You know, the, the greenest, I always say the greenest electron is the, the electron we never used. And so we really focus on uh, not using as many electrons as possible. You know, we've been fortunate over our evolution. You know, we started off as a green state data center, really focused on the best practices around uh, operating data centers, around managing data centers, and, and have been focused on that from the beginning, but we've seen the evolution as we've grown and, and taken over data centers that weren't built to be green data centers, and that presented a whole other set of challenges. You know, today at this point, we're the 25th largest tech and telecom purchaser of renewable energy uh, in the U.S., and, and so there, that's one component to it, but as we continue to grow, we see opportunities uh, to continue to push the envelope of ways that we can be uh, more energy efficient, uh, continue to be socially responsible, and helping uh, produce, you know, what we see is, a, is an industry that is, you know, using a ton of electrons and a ton of electricity. We want to help make that industry uh, as energy efficient and, and green as possible. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Chad, at XKL, you work with uh, network equipment. How does uh, that play into the green data center equation? And what's your take on the topic? Uh, yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, well, as an equipment vendor, um, uh, we have various motivations for um, for how we design our systems. Uh, obviously, functionally, we gotta we gotta solve some problems, but uh, we also need to sell these solutions. And um, over the last uh, six, seven years now, uh, one of the requirements is, uh, is, is low power consumption. Uh, these are monthly reoccurring costs that our customers are experiencing, and, um, and they need to lower them. Uh, CapEx is, uh, is obviously a big uh, uh, focus, but uh, the operating expenses, whether it's for, for uh, delivering power to run the, the, the equipment, or the cooling involved in, in keeping the environment uh, at the right temperatures. So, so we spent a lot of time here at XKL uh, focusing on on how to make uh, how to solve the problems and how to do it efficiently. Um, and, and component selection uh, is is critical for us. Uh, it's one thing to go out and find solutions to uh, problems and and just say, okay, here you go. This is going to work great. And then after the fact, figure out that uh, the, the, the solution you presented is, is consuming three times the power it should. I mean, anybody that's uh, walked through a, a data center space or machine room uh, and you have to put earplugs on, earplugs in your ears to, to get through all the noise from all the fans, all that cooling, all that heat dissipation. Um, so, so we're really careful about uh, components we select operating modes for devices. Everybody wants to be uh, the solution for, for, for every application. And, and when you get into the data center space, um, the, the problems are a little bit different. And so you have to have solutions that, that really meet their needs. And, uh, and it's no longer the case where you can simply move bits from uh, point A to point B without considering what it costs to move those bits. Um, things as simple as, as airflow and, and heat sinks and, and, and how you, how you uh, manage your systems. Uh, you go into a, a data center space and airflow going from a hot aisle to a cold aisle. Well, there are some, there are some uh, components and systems out there that the airflow is going in the wrong direction. How does that help folks in the data center 
to uh, to integrate all these pieces and have a hot air uh, aisle, a cold air exchange, you know, et cetera. So um, it, it, it's no longer sufficient to simply produce a solution from uh, – um, from whatever space you're in, whether it's optical networking, which is what we do here at Xcale, or um, or or, or uh, other aspects of, of what goes on in the data center, you have to do it efficiently. You have to think about it, and you have to think about it right up front. So that's what we do here, and uh, and really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this here, because most of the time, uh, folks in in these green data center discussions don't get down to the level of uh, uh, the systems, the individual systems that go in there. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk here today. Well, I think it's really important that you've raised that it's uh, uh, an issue that exists on lots of facets and many levels. The, one of the challenges, I think, in terms of uh, trying to advance green data center principles has been the motivation of different parties. Uh, you know, is it is it about economics? Is it about uh, philosophy and then uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, so I'll, I'll put to the panel, I'll, I'll start with uh, Sean, I'm interested in your take on this, about, you know, institutionally, uh, you know, how do, how do we advance the cause of, of the green data center? Uh, is it something that has to come from the, the operators or the, and are the customers, you know, providing any pressure and uh, changing the uh, changing the, the landscape at all. You know, it's it's really interesting, uh, again, kind of going back to that topic of the evolution. As a company, our first data center was built very specifically to be as energy efficient and, and green as possible. Um, you know, we're a co-location and cloud hosting company, so now we have to consider uh, some of the things like the hardware that is going into our data center from a cloud perspective, the hardware we put in there has to be energy efficient. Um, but, but, you know, it's a pretty complex reality. You know, when we got to build our first data center as a, you know, focus solely around being energy efficient, now we've acquired data centers. So I have a new appreciation for legacy data centers, right? And so having a keen focus on being energy efficient, being uh, focused on uh, how do you manage airflow, how can you control the airflow, minimize the amount of cooling required for a given amount of compute? That's a new challenge. And, and what, what I always thought when I first started was, oh, my gosh, why, why doesn't everybody do this? And, and I didn't realize exactly how hard it was until you walk into a legacy data center or a data center that was built before uh, being energy efficient or green was important. And so we're starting to see, and we saw it right at the beginning when we first started in 2008, uh, a drive that customers – specifically chose us because of our energy efficiency. So efficiency. Um, but then it's interesting. So 2008, it waned. 2009, waned. But what we're seeing again is this big uptick in green initiatives, green being written into RFPs, green uh, a focus on energy efficiency being uh, a component. And it's really being driven by the boards of these larger companies. And so it's the companies that are now driving us and continually, continuously pushing us to be more and more energy efficient, not only just based on our own corporate philosophy, but it's actually being driven by the companies in the RFPs and the larger enterprises. Uh, uh, thanks, Sean. So, Benjamin, you, you talked about uh, the importance of uh, the environmental and sustainability uh, uh, portion of this. Uh, how do you put that passion in, into practice? Is that a challenge in the, in the data center industry these days? Well, I mean, to follow to Sean's point, uh, point and also to Chad's uh, point, um, I've seen the pricing uh, 16 years ago when we developed the first uh, big uh, network access points for power. And then uh, if I look at the pricing now, I mean, the increase is uh, especially for DC power uh, almost over 1,000%. So uh, as, as Sean mentioned, a lot of my big carriers, you know, they push back very hard on and the fact that they get a, a, a power bill which is way, way much higher than their colocation environment or exceeds all the other managed services that they're purchasing from, um, you know, I don't want to name any names, but any big data center that provides uh, um, uh, facilities out there. So my, my take on this is, uh, you know, going green not only that provides a solution for um, keeping keeping our world clean, but also we really have to look after our customers because they 
at one point they were going to be like, okay, I can't pay for a circuit of 20 amps, thousands of dollars uh, for DC power, and, and the chat points, we need equipment which cools those data centers faster and in a much more efficient way. So, and the only way to go is, as Sean mentioned, you know, we have to go green. Uh, green is uh, not only going to help um, the environment, but also it's going to reduce the invoices and um, gain more traction to bring more customers and create a, an entrepreneurial ecosystem within the data center floors. As long as you keep those expenses very high, um, the small cloud providers, they cannot afford to go into an Equinix or a Terramark or one of those big facilities because they just cannot afford their, their, um, their invoices. So we, we want to provide a solution where everybody can participate in, 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 the, big, uh, in the big players. Uh, and Chad, in terms of uh, the, the equipment buyers, uh, they have may have a lot of different motivations for their for their choices. Where does the energy usage fit in that? Is, is that more front of mind for the, the folks you're talking to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, once upon a time, you could present your product and say, "Look, this is this is what it does, um, and it works great. It's it's wonderful. It's magic. Uh, just give us some money. Here you go. Deploy it, and it's done." Uh, that, that's no longer the case. Uh, right up top, one of the first couple bullet points is uh, uh, what's your power consumption? What's your power consumption per, per gigabit, for example? Uh, it really matters, and it's a selling point. And so, so it comes full circle. Um, these requirements come in earlier in the design cycle for, for building systems, and, and therefore the, uh, the designers have to think about it. Um, but, you know, we, we, we have other motives for doing it, too, because they – a lower power consumption system, a uh, system that has cooler environment components last longer, um, the systems are more reliable, uh, it, you know, it goes on down the chain. So, so customer support is, is, uh, is uh, simplified because you have fewer failures. So it, it, it's, it's really a, a system level approach um, that uh, you, we're not just designing so that a customer doesn't have to pay so much to, uh, uh, to run the equipment. It's also about the, the lifetime of the equipment. Simpler designs, better airflow management. As I said, we, we, we deal with a lot of carrier uh, hotels as well, and um, uh, solutions come to them, and, and, and they have a very restricted space. They're trying to put uh, a, a, a racks of equipment in place, and, and if you bring a, a system along that has the airflow going across, right to left, for example, well, how, how does that work? I mean, you've got equipment right next door that's going front to back, and now you've got something blowing hot air onto it, right? So you, you have to have good system design, good system approach to all of this, and you have to play nice in the environment. There's an awful lot of equipment going into these facilities, and it's a hard enough problem trying to, uh, to cool this equipment without having to have these uh, inconsistent approaches to, to the design. But, you know, from our standpoint, um, simpler is, is always better. And it's always less power consuming, and it costs less to run. I mean, it's it's really very fundamental if you think about it. So, one of the questions, and, and certainly the, the data center guys, I'm interested in your uh, take on this: is what are the strategies right now that are making a difference, that are gaining traction, and that are really you know working in terms of uh, you know improving the sustainability and the uh, the energy profile of data centers. Uh, Benjamin, why don't you give us your thoughts? Well, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, the solar and the wind energies are, are some that we really have to look at. And uh, again, to, to complement what my colleagues are saying and uh, to Chad's point, I, I've seen data center where we have, as you call them, pancake fires. They have stuck a lot of equipment into one rack and they put rectifiers on top and um, they don't know why, they, why the equipment is melting. So. Um, moving towards a cutting edge technology it's not only going to help uh, bring a, bring a better solution but also I'm, I'm thinking you know loud out here uh, what do you do when you have a power outage you know don't rely on that uh, uh, on that 180,000 gallons of food that I have out there we can have a better system and you can have better equipment from Chad which uh, can provide you batteries and uh, CPUs where you can have stored power in preventing a uh, uh, power outage. I mean, um, I again, I build data centers in a lot of um, 
um, um, cities around the world, but if you think Miami has the biggest natural access point in the world, but Miami is also the capital of the hurricane. So uh, I need, with the cutting edge technology, I need system for backups because it's extremely important um, for our customers to give them service level agreement guarantees 100% on pretty much everything, and that includes power, connectivity, cooling. So not moving towards cutting edge technology, I see um, a problem that's going to be sustained there in how you create a backup, how you make sure that your data centers are uh, up and running 100%, how you give SLAs 100% to your customers. And I just see that, you know, having a green data center design, as Sean mentioned, since 2008, uh, you have much better chances and possibilities with the green data centers to offer all this to your customers. And also it comes to a much more cost-effective solution. Um, John, to pick up on that point, um, you've worked with a bunch of data centers and with, with different kind of uh, energy and green profiles. Uh, what are the, the big challenges in making these data centers green, and then what's been your experience? You know, what we really focus on is kind of in, in three areas. Again, back to the most important thing, which is don't use the uh, electrons in the first place. Um, but, but from a renewable energy power perspective, we kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, local generation of renewable energy, while it's nice, it's still not the most efficient uh, place to generate the renewable energy. So we uh, are really focused on supporting the renewable energy sources where they are the most efficient. So in wind farms, where they are not usually in a city that we're trying to operate a data center in. So we are comfortable and, and recognize that Again, it's back to efficiency. So if you can go to where the data center, uh, if where a data center can have on-site renewable energy, great. If not, buying it helps support and continue to grow those resources out in the um, areas where you can buy or can produce renewable energy for the right price. So it's, it's, it's sourcing of energy, but then it really comes down to not using the electrons. And I kind of, from a co-location perspective, break that co-location into one component and then cloud hosting into another. From the co-location perspective, you know, it's actually going back and using tried and true technologies that uh, are, are evaporative cooling technologies that drive the PUE way down, you know, in, in, uh, in, to a factor of almost 80% compared to some of the other traditional data centers that we own. So we, we leverage evaporative cooling to drive our PUE down to the 1.15, 1.2 in our purpose-built data center facilities. But then again, it's just being laser focused on putting the effort into containing the airflow, managing the airflow so that, you know, the, the airflow isn't being heated up by hot air coming from a, you know, a, a piece of hardware that's turned around inappropriately. Um, so it's really, you know, that, that airflow management, focusing in on your UPSs. UPSs were another place that we were able to get a lot of efficiency out of versus traditional UPSs uh, with the cloud conversion. So, and then lastly, from a cloud perspective, we've actually adopted uh, spin down technologies in our object store so that when uh, our large multi-petabyte object store is just archiving data, we're able to spin down and again, not use the electricity in the first place. So you put the whole package together from renewable energy to efficient uh, technology to then focused on the hardware itself you can get a good solid package of delivering the lowest operating costs and the greenest form factor. And, and Chad, both you and Sean mentioned the airflow issues. Is, is the situation getting better in terms of like with, with network equipment and, uh, uh, and seeing progress towards uh, making life a little easier for uh, the data center technicians who are trying to come up with uh, airflow that will, will be really efficient? Uh, well, yes and no. Um, we're trying to make it better, uh, but uh, we, we continuously find um, other vendors uh, just trying to get a solution out there uh, and, and thinking about some of these airflow and cooling issues as, uh, as a second thought. And, um, uh, and some of our partners and our customers that have uh, data centers on um, you know, in remote places because the energy is, is cheaper and, and uh, it, a little bit more difficult to, to get to perhaps. Um, these kinds of solutions aren't, aren't resonating anymore. Um, they're, they're starting to realize that, uh, and, and to Sean's point, uh, we can't have that kind of equipment integrated into, the, into, the, into this environment. 
Uh, everything matters. And even though um, uh, a vendor might be providing a very uh, inexpensive solution, that initial CapEx expense is offset very quickly with the OpEx expenses that are occurred either by their, by their power consumption, their cooling, or the infrastructure changes that they force upon uh, the data center guys to try to accommodate these, these airflow issues where they put up a wall in between racks they leave racks empty because uh, they can't afford to have the next next guys over blowing onto them. For example, um, we, we've had several customers, uh, and this was how we really got into the data center space in the first place. The, the, they, uh, to Sean's point, um, taking over older data centers, uh, you have some interesting problems to solve, and um, we're finding that uh, some of them the racks are half full uh, because they can't deliver any more power. Uh, so they're forced to move uh, to to the adjacent building or to the adjacent uh, area where they can get more land to build the next generation data center. And so we we provide the interconnection. That's my point. How we're getting there, but it brought us into this this space and having to consider um, the problems that the data center guys are solving, whether it's with um, reconditioning old spaces or building brand new ones. And so, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, you have to deal with, with, uh, with all of this. So there's no one solution fits all, but uh, we're still seeing problems in the uh, equipment vendor space where, um, where some vendors are uh, uh, not paying attention, not paying attention to what the customer is asking for. And that's, that's this, this discussion right here today is all about. Uh, let's uh, take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, the opportunities going forward. We've kind of identified some of the existing problems and uh, uh, some of the things that are getting traction right now. Uh, what excites you uh, in terms of uh, future opportunities to make data centers cleaner and more efficient and sustainable? I'll, I'll start with Sean. You know, it's interesting. I think the number is worldwide. There's like 8.6 million data centers. And so the thing that kind of is uh, exciting for us is this march towards the cloud. So what, what ultimately happens as people start to select cloud you know, hosting companies, cloud infrastructure as a service, platform as a service companies, it's shutting down these quote unquote data centers that exist in closets, that exist under under um, under your desk. And it, it's this move to the cloud that really, you know, virtualization made a big impact in, in the amount of electricity consumption. But the, the thing that's now happening is you know, those inefficient data centers are now being taken out of the market. And so as, as companies are marching towards the cloud, the opportunity is really great to see an incredible decrease in the amount of compute or the amount of power per compute. And so, you know, one of the things we really focus on in our cloud is power per compute or power per uh, gigabit per second or power per um, gigabyte of storage. And so as we start to look at those metrics, that, that march away uh, from closet data centers, from the you know, 100 kW data centers to, to larger data centers and, and into the cloud is really where we think we're going to see the biggest delta and biggest difference in the amount of electricity consumed across those different uh, units. Uh, how about you, Benjamin? What, what, do you, what do you see on the horizon that's exciting uh, in terms of the opportunities going forward? Um, to follow Sean's thought, um, I do have a, another um, venture here at Leap Factor where we created a SaaS platform, which is um, uh, a very cool product empowering salespeople. And what I see that, um, uh, you know, I have my equipment in four different data centers, and as Sean mentioned, I removed all the equipment from a garage and I centralized it into uh, into the secure environments because I'm required to do so by my customers. So I'm sure a lot of cloud providers are doing the same thing. So um, having having those platforms, it's it's um, it's cutting edge te technology, and um, they're all very low latency products. And for example, I can have equipment in Man Data Center in New York. I can service a customer in Asia. They won't know where my equipment is. So. Um, providing these uh, big facilities that are green and um, cost efficient uh, would attract a lot of uh, companies like mine and will attract a lot of uh, SaaS platforms or whatever, whatever cloud technologies you might have. So the centralization is coming in the future is, is, is very clear. Uh, it, it's going to come down to 
the data centers providers how they want to approach this and how, how they want to welcome their, their customers and create that uh, ecosystem on the data center floor where you have a thousand customers selling services to the customers existing on the floor already and also to the market. And Chad, what are the opportunities that you see? Well, uh, at XKL, working on optical networking solutions has uh, has given us a uh, a really good understanding of of how you're going to move bits around. Um, it, it's no longer the case that you can just go buy a uh, uh, 11RU rack that has fans in it that's consuming 200 watts just for the cooling. Uh, that doesn't even count all of the uh, the line cards and everything else that goes into to that product. And so um, how do we get the power consumption down and still increase the functionality? Uh, the, the cost uh, per gigabits going down, power consumption per gigabits going down, as I said. And so what we're seeing out there is, uh, for example, the first generation 100 gig transport, um, while it got you from A to B, uh, it was very power hungry. Uh, and so... The next generation using a better modulation techniques, discrete multitone I'm thinking of in particular, um, uh, is, is really the, the wave of the future. And this, this uh, applies specifically to shorter reach applications where you're doing uh, intra or inter data center connectivity. Uh, and so um, those technologies have to continue uh, because it's just it's not sustainable the way that uh, uh, first generation of this uh, technology came out. Uh, so I see that happening, and, and the the, uh, the, co the co uh, companies that can integrate this quickly and efficiently are going to get the market share from folks like like Benjamin and Sean because they need these solutions. Uh, they can't afford to uh, continue to operate uh, business as usual, and so. We recognize this, and and uh, and those that don't uh, should get left behind. So that, that it's it's the nature of the beast. Uh, you, to be profitable, you you have to um, you have to sell your products, and you have to deliver the solutions that customers are asking for. And so um, uh, uh, these are the focal points right now for us as a, as a network vendor trying to uh, to satisfy the requirements uh, both of the data center space and other space as well at the same time. Uh, uh, I'm uh, grateful to all of you for the conversation. This was a great discussion. And then with that, I'll hand it back to Jamie. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Rich. Rich Miller, everyone, of Data Center Frontier for moderating our roundtable on the evolution of the Green Data Center. Thanks to our esteemed panelists, Sean, Benjamin, Chad, thank you for your thoughtful insights on the challenges and opportunities that certainly lay before us. Thank you, audience, for joining us. If you want to see this and other monthly virtual roundtables on demand, plus the calendar for upcoming roundtables, go ahead and check us out, both virtually and at Telecom Exchange. That's jamiescotter.com and thetelecomexchange.com. And if you'd like your C-level to be featured right here, um, go ahead and check, uh, send us an email to pr at jamiescotter.com. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and on JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom. Until next time, happy networking.